miss me, baby. Bayonetta! Well, you guys asked for it, and I'm here to deliver it. Welcome back to Cram School featuring Bayonetta. Bayonetta in the current meta is known as the Noob Killer. If you have no idea how to play her, you've never fought against one before, or you just don't know how to SDI or deal with Witch Time, you will absolutely get crushed. And because she's a very strong character, she's very popular in the meta right now. If you're looking for a 20 minute video on how to SDI every single Bayonetta combo, this is not the video for you. Cram School is designated to teach you how to deal with characters practically so you can use the knowledge in tournament. You're not going to remember and be able to recognize every single Bayonetta combo situation that you need to SDI when you're in tournament, so there's no point in talking about that. This video is also going to be broken down like the last video I made into separate parts, but please do not skip to the SDI section as it is probably the least important part uh, for practical knowledge on how to deal with her. Watch the whole thing if you want to be good at this matchup. And I guess without further ado from there, we're going to get right on into it on how to deal with Bayonetta. Is that all you've got? This is probably the most important aspect of the entire matchup, the neutral game. A lot of the time, players get noob stomped by Bayonetta simply because they spend the majority of the game in disadvantage. Avoid unnecessary interactions with Bayonetta, as they will frequently cause you to end, either end up dying or succumbing to a huge deficit. Bayonetta's will use tilts, aerials, grabs, walking, empty hopping, simply standing there, and whatever else they can to convince you to leave shield or miss space. Don't get baited. Bayonetta's approach game is very weak, so patience is key. You absolutely have to play bait and punch. To deal with Bayonetta and damage her, try to focus on things that are true combos. Focus on things that come out faster than frame 6, or if you have throw combos, spam them. Anything that she can't react to with Witch Time is the safest bet for you to go through. If your character can crawl, staying low to the ground will help you avoid bullet arts damage while still having access to all of your neutral options. It also makes it very hard for her to hit you with aerials as your hurt box is lower, you have a lot more time to shield her aerials. From your side of the matchup, the most important part of your neutral game is where you're going to be standing. Bayonetta's dash speed and grab range are both relatively poor, so you should position yourself in a way that you can react to her burst options while still being able to whip punish and effectively pressure her. Patience doesn't equal jumping around and trying to actively run away all the time. Putting yourself on a higher level of playing than Bayonetta will allow her to pressure you and whittle you down until your defenses are so low that eventually something is going to connect. If you ever feel clueless of what to do in neutral, the main two things to remember are patience and spacing. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. The best way to protect yourself against Bayonetta isn't to learn how to SDI all of her combos, it's to not get hit in the first place and that is going to be dependent on your spacing and how patient you are to punish her mistakes. Smashing! So what frustrates a lot of players is not only the fact that Bayonetta gets a ton off of getting a hit, but it almost seems like there's no actual chance to hit her back. Good Bales are really good at deceiving the other player. They make their moves that either convince you to preemptively strike, or they bounce off your shield or defense in a way that makes for a really nasty counterattack. I've played just about every notable Bayo outside of the Japanese Bayos, and in my opinion, the strongest Bayonetta at achieving this is Captain Zack. He makes a lot of stuff happen. Just a ton of things are just happening all at once, and when you think you have an opportunity to hit him, bam, you get witch time. Bam, he hits you with a witch twist out of nowhere. You get down it off the side or whatever it is to make for a super nasty counterattack that often just ends up killing you. There are three important factors to know about dealing damage with Bayo. First, knowing what's true and what's not. Bayonetta has a mechanic called Bat Within, which works similar to a parry. If she's hit early during her roll sidestep or air dodge, or even late during witch time, it'll trigger and essentially put her into a position to counterattack her opponent while also taking half the damage she has inflicted. If she's in the air when Bat Within triggers, she can control which direction she travels by holding the direction. 
If not, then she just goes in whatever direction she continues to move in. So rolls, if she rolls forward, she'll just get, if bat within triggers, she'll continue to roll forward. Whereas if she sidesteps, she'll just side, she'll bat within in place. Bat within is a very strong counterattack for players that are unexpecting or not anticipating it as it puts her in a favorable position a lot of the time for witch twist or other follow-ups. If a combo isn't true, especially if it's a combo that goes vertical, I highly suggest not doing it. Mainly things like up throw up airs or anything like that that are already put you towards the top last zone. Just because if it's not actually true or you're too slow on the trigger or whatever it is, Bayonetta can get underneath you and if she doesn't hit the ground, then there's almost no lag between her using Bat Within and retaliating with a move of her own and you still being in the lag of your own move. You have to know what's true and to know what damage you can get off. That way she's not getting a free parry with Bat Within. Second, you always want to consider what can be witch time. Throw combos and command grabs are super good versus Bayo, mainly because she doesn't really have strong options to get away from her, and they cannot be witch time. When you're stringing Bayonetta with any type of combo string, it's very important to note that it's really hard for her to witch time a, out of a combo string. Using special moves out of hit stun take a lot longer than rather jumping or air dodging or just simply attacking. So her using witch time usually isn't going to happen if you're already stringing her with combo strength and she's in tumble. Make sure she's going to be in tumble because if she's not put in tumble, she's not going to be put into that state where this will matter. Make sure you know what's true and try to optimize your throw combos to maximize your damage without getting counterattacked. The third thing you want to re recognize is how she can reduce the lag of her own special moves. When Bayonetta uses a series of special moves, when she hits the ground, depending on the number of special moves she's used before reaching the ground, she will have a significant amount of lag, which is normally a prime opportunity to punish her. But, like I said, Bayonetta is a master of deceiving. So she can turn that disadvantageous position into a super advantageous position for her in an instant. You have to be wary. The first thing you need to worry about is Witch Twist. With Witch Twist, if you do up B1, you can Witch Time directly out of up B1. Assuming no other type of special move was used, you can immediately press down B afterwards. So if you, you don't hit her out of the up B before it ends, just don't do it at all because you can immediately get witch time and then you're in a terrible spot altogether. The second way of reducing her lag is heal slide. So say she's using a bunch of special moves and she does the downward afterburner kick. If the height is correct and she times her heal slide correctly, it'll seamlessly go from afterburner kick into heal slide. Second thing to note about this is that heal slide is not a multi-hit move, meaning that once you shield it, you can grab it. You can shield, you can grab it before she passes through your shield and crosses you up. You can drop shield and immediately grab her after she hits your shield. Or you can just wait for the kick and grab her. But heal slide is not a multi-hit move and it's very easy to punish with drop shield dash back grab. The third thing that she uses to reduce the lag of her special moves is witch time. It's the most obvious bait that many Bayonetta players use just because if you slip up you can die you can take a ton of damage it's just a severe punish and it's something that you should never sleep on. Always respect the fact that she can cancel her special lag by using witch time before hitting the ground. Another way that Bayonetta has to reduce the lag of her specials is by going to the ledge. No matter if she gets hit or not, no matter if she touches the ground, if Bayonetta grabs the ledge with any type of special lag, it's all gone if she returns to the stage. It's, it's literally all gone at that point. So Bayonetta's often use going to the ledge as a way to avoid hitting the ground and just succumbing to the entirety of their special lag. If she has no jumps left and tries to go to the ledge to get rid of her special lag, hit her. Just throw whatever strong punish you can right before she touches the ledge. If she witch times, she will fall past the ledge and die anyway. Bayonetta cannot grab the ledge directly after witch time and she will not have a jump. So she won't be able to jump back to hit the stage to, to grab the ledge again. Throw whatever strong move you can if she tries to grab the ledge with no jumps. Make sure you count them because if she witch times you and she still has a jump, so just simply jump back to the ledge and get her witch time punished. Many Bowser players like to just burn all of her jumps 
she has to fall directly to the ledge and just F smash her at the side of this off the side of the stage at like 50 or whatever. You can put very, very strong punishes there. Other most common way Bayonetta's get rid of their lag is by simply using Dare. Dare is a very, very explosive move and it can be used almost any type of height above the stage. You can use it right as you're about to touch the stage and you'll explode the other guy. It is a very, very powerful move. And they especially use this near the edge of stages or off the Smashville platform. So never, ever, ever sleep on this move or you'll get stock taken very, very quickly. Captain Zack is a fiend for this. And it's a very, very strong way of showing how detrimental it can be if you're not on top of uh, your punish game and you're not respecting the fact that she has a multitude of ways to cancel her special leg. Ta-ta! Keeping Bayonetta in a disadvantageous position is super key because you probably won't get many times to get into this position in the first place. Holding an advantage state versus Bayonetta can become hard with Bat Within, Downward Afterburner Kick, Witch Time, and a plethora of other options she has to just maneuver throughout the air to prevent you from following up. However, it's important that you get as much damage as possible but doesn't necessarily have to be in one sitting. When in an advantage state versus Bayonetta, always anticipate Bat Within. If she has to Bat Within into the ground, she gets lag similar to as if she air dodged into the ground. So a lot of the times you could further extend your combo strength if you force her to Bat Within into the ground. If there's a possibility of her getting underneath you with Bat Within, like I said earlier, just don't do the combo string as if it isn't true. You can easily go from advantage to disadvantage in a heartbeat. Bale is a super good weight for comboing once she goes into tumble. Stringing her across the stage is usually more reliable than trying to follow her air drift and lining up vertical combos. Chase her around the stage and keep her in the disadvantage position that you want her in, even if you can't just string together everything just straight up true. Just keep following her, keep reading her defensive habits, and keep tossing her back into the air. Unless your chances of getting gimped are minuscule or pretty much zero, do not jump off stage to edge guard Bayonetta. Keep center stage and keep that advantageous position and keep doing damage. Always consider the fact that she can land with Witch Time as an option. It's another way that she can just quickly turn your advantage into your disadvantage instead. Lastly, you need to be ready to chase up the dab kick as TK calls it or the downward afterburner kick. It's a really quick way for her to shoot from one side of the stage to the other. Lots of characters can punish it as long as you set yourself up for it. Characters with things that can gap close like Pikachu's quick attack or characters that can toss items across the stage like Diddy Banana to follow it up are really good against this but you have to be prepared. If you want to punish Dab Kick, the best idea is to wait for her to stack up a lot of special lag and when she uses it, spot dodge it so she crashes into the ground rather than bouncing off of your shield so you have to follow up for another punish. Goodbye. As I said earlier, the best cure is prevention. If you find yourself spending most of the game smash DIing out of her combos, you are playing the matchup wrong. She obviously has a multitude of ways to kill you off the top, off the side, off the bottom, whatever. But I'm going to cover the most important DI and Smash DI situations so that way you get the most out of this video. They increase Bayonetta's multiplier for SDI not only on Witch Twist but also on Afterburner Kick and this is very important for escaping her death combos. For most situations, the goal is to make it so Bayonetta can't line herself up and drag you off the top. The basic combo a lot of the time is a launcher, whether that be down tilt, up, be, uh, up tilt, or just a witch twist itself. Launcher to up B, side B to up B, side B to kill shot. As a not big character or fast faller, by quarter circle DIing upward, most players can get out of at least a second up B but they don't know anything other than smash the eye up and pray. Uh, with the new up B, if you get launched by it, the side B follow up is normally a 50-50. Either Bayo side B immediately to chase how you DI low, or they delay it with a jump to chase your high DI. If you do what generically almost every single player does who doesn't know the matchup, if you do the generic thing of just smash the eye and praying from the beginning, this 50-50 essentially becomes 100-0. They don't even have to guess because a lot of players just smash DI up and so that makes it so all they have to do is just chase your high DI and it makes it significantly easier 
for them to catch your um, to catch you with the side B follow up. At higher percents, it's almost always optimal to either DI down and away or just smash DI completely away from Bayonetta, and so there will be no way for her to connect to the follow up side B. If she does catch your DI after up B1, prepare to smash DI the afterburn kick. Remember the goal is always to make it as difficult for her to line up her combo as possible. So smash DI the incoming afterburner kick towards the direction she's coming from to make it so she can't immediately do another up B. If you're at lower mid percents, smash DIing towards her is usually the best since she'll likely overshoot the side B from the percents being too low and she'll have to chase you with another side B. If you're at higher percents, smash DIing away will make it hard for her to follow up since up B doesn't hit far in front of her. After you smash DI the first afterburner kick, it's very likely that she'll have to use another afterburner kick to adjust her positioning to line herself up to get the, uh, the second up B. So again, smash DI the second one so that way you don't end up above her, just like the first one. If you do end up getting caught by the second witch twist anyway, don't panic. It is significantly easier to smash DI out of, the poten out of potential follow ups for uh, the second up B than it is to smash DI out of the first up B. Smash DI, smash DI up and away for her and air dodging incoming up air. Most of the time you can get out of this one completely. Bales can obviously adjust their combos to follow how you SDI, but as a rule of thumb, smash DI so you don't end up above her and try to remain in front of her at kill percents since her up air starts from behind her. It gives you a lot more time to air dodge and it makes it less likely for her to connect the killing up air. Bale having rage makes it much, much, much more likely to, for you to float out of the up beast trains. And since you'll be in tumble, you can float right off the top and die at super early percents or just zero. Much like zero suits up B. If she doesn't have rage, the only real way for her to zero to death you is for her to drag you off the top with up B in general, with the witch twist altogether. Without rage, up air almost never kills. The only way she can kill you really is to drag you off the top with the up B itself. If she does have rage, don't smash GI the second up B to escape off the top, especially if you're near the top blast zone, you will almost always get yourself killed. Smash GI in front of her or down or whatever and take the up air or just don't get dragged into the blast zone by the second up B. Make it as hard as possible for her to connect the second up B by adjusting not only your positioning by smash giant the witch twist but also the afterburner kicks. They increase the smash giant multiplier on those as well. So a lot of the time as long as you don't get dragged into the bubble with up B you'll be fine even if you take an up air at low percents. So close! Witch time is a devastating counter that allows Bayonetta to get massive punishes. Everyone knows this but most players don't know the other application Bayonetta players use this for. By successfully landing Witch Time, Bayonetta is granted Brief Invincibility, which she can then use to approach you with invulnerability. Characters that rely on projectiles can get zone broken very easily if they're not respecting this option because they can't stop an invincible Bayonetta from approaching them. Other niche things about Witch Time are that a full Witch Time recharges in 21 seconds. Witch Time also grants frames of, invin of invincibility on cast and also has frames at the end that cause the player to perform Bat Within instead when they get hit. Witch Time and Bat Within can also overlap, however if that happens, the affected player takes reduced slow time. Witch Time also charges slightly faster because of this. One more thing is that Witch Time will cause Bayonetta to slow her descent when in the air on the first time cast but every subsequent time until she hits the ground will not affect her fall speed. Miss me, baby. There are definitely a couple of matchup specific things that you have to be wary of when fighting Bayonetta. For one, when SDIing her combos, you have to wait until she actually connects a move to smash DI. If you buffer your inputs preemptively, you'll end up just not doing anything for your SDI and it'll just be as if you put your controller down. At high percent, she changes her kill confirms from witch twist into combo moves into usually down tilt up air, the downward afterburner kick into aerial uh, afterburner kick into up air. That's another one. Uh, witch time is another sh kill setup that she'll use and F throw, high percent F throws. Another thing is that Bayonetta's up B is massively easier to smash D out of if you get hit from behind her. When Bayonetta's with smash attacks, they'll often hold the A button to fire their guns and if you collide with their body, you take small knockback, which will often ruin your punishes. 
Lastly, don't get cheesed by heel slide to F smash at mid percent. So do the heel slide, not do the launching kick, and then you'll probably air dodge, and then you'll get F smashed off the side of the stage. Don't fall for it. Jump away. So that about wraps up the Bayonetta Cram School. I know I didn't go into super detail about how to smash DI just about all of her combos or her forward air strings or maybe even just getting which time to have a recovery or something like that, but I tried to make the video as short as possible while still adding the most information. Uh, I'm gonna link a bunch of videos about how, to, how um, other players smash DI Bayonetta combo strings just as supplemental information and also the fact that I left out information doesn't mean you should not go and seek the information out yourself. There are multiple sources and multiple ways that you can obtain information and always get better at the matchup. So I'm also going to link the Twitters of the prominent Bayonetta mains in the meta right now. I know I said a lot, a couple things over and over again, and I thought about editing it out, but I decided that the more times I say it, the more likely it is probably to stick. So I ended up just leaving it, leaving it in there. Next time, the next cram school hopefully won't be nearly as long, but I figured that Bayonetta is one of those topics that everybody wants to talk about, so I tried to throw as much information in there without being redundant. Again, I love you guys, and thanks for watching the video all the way through. The next video definitely won't, have, won't be this long. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.